you shake it, then you don't get it. All right. Now, here's our equation. We want our equation in that conic section form, because when it's in this format, it's relatively easy to find A and B. Would everybody agree with me? It's relatively easy to find the center. So what we want to do is we need to, but the main important thing is we have those binomial squared. So we want to complete the square. So to complete the square, though, we have to get our variables next to each other. So I have 3x squared minus 12x plus 5y squared plus 30y. And I'm going to put the 42 to the other side, so I'm going to negate it on both sides. All right. Now that I've grouped them, I'm going to want to create a binomial squared from the x's. And I'm going to want to create a binomial squared with the y's. Okay? But before I can complete the square, we remember from quadratics, we can only complete the square when the coefficient of my quadratic term, the term that's raised to the, to the second power, is 1. So here, I have my coefficient is 3. So I've got to factor that out. So I'll factor out a 3. And I'm left with x squared minus, oops, I don't want to use that. He's black x squared minus 4x. And then over here, I have a 5 in front. I don't want a 5 there, so I'm going to factor out a 5. If I factor out a 5, I'll be left with y squared plus 6y equals negative 42. Is everybody good so far with what math I have done? All right. Now we're going to do the completing the square portion. So remember, completing the square is basically taking your linear term, your b, dividing it by 2, and squaring it. So in this case, it's negative 4 divided by 2 squared. So negative 4 divided by 2 is negative 2. Negative 2 squared is going to be 4. And therefore, then we take 6. 6 divided by 2 is 3. 3 squared is 9. So those are the values that complete my square. Those values create a perfect square trinomial. And again, that's so important because I can take perfect square trinomials and factor them down. So when I add them inside my parentheses, it looks something like this. You could factor out a y and an x, right? But that doesn't, the problem with that is that doesn't really help us with what we're trying to achieve. What we're trying to achieve is, you're right, you can factor those out. But what we're trying to achieve is a perfect square trinomial. So if you take out the x, you can't create a perfect square trinomial, right? Now, the other thing that I'm doing here is I want you guys to understand I'm adding this 4 and the 9 to both, there was a 5 out here, nobody said anything about. Thank you. So what I want everybody to understand is looking over here is since I added a 4 on the left side, you have to add a 4 to the right side. You add a 9 on the left side, you have to add a 9 on the right side. But remember, these 4 is not really adding a 4. That's a 4 that's being multiplied by 3. That's why I multiplied that 4 by 3. This 9 is being multiplied by 5. So you had to multiply that 1 by 5. Does everybody follow? So it's so again, what I did is I just created now a perfect square trinomial, <coughs> binomial. And let's see, that becomes 12, 40, 5. So that's 57. Um, so that becomes 15. Carry the 1. Divide by 15. Therefore, we have x minus 2 squared over 5 plus y plus 3 squared over 3 equals 1. And we did all that work, and we still haven't even done one thing yet, right? We just put it into the format that we wanted to, right? But hopefully, you, since we've done, what, four examples now? Hopefully, we can do the rest of this rather quickly, or at least I'm going to do this rather quickly. Hopefully, you guys will be able to kind of catch on very quickly. So first thing I notice, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say the center is 2 comma negative 3. I'm going to say a squared is equal to 5. Therefore, a is equal to the square plus or minus square root of 5. b squared is 3. Uh, 
So therefore, b equals plus or minus the square root of 3. And c squared is going to be the difference of a squared minus b squared, which is going to equal 2. So c equals plus or minus the square root of 2. Hmm? What? Remember, c squared was a squared minus b squared? It is five. No, cool. um, it is oh, OK. All right, so now we still need to figure out what the foci, the vertices, and so forth. Since my a squared is under my x, that means I'm going left or right, correct? Mm -hmm. So to find my vertices, if I'm going left or right, should I add my vertices, should I add my vertices to the x coordinate or to the y coordinate? X coordinate. So 2 plus or minus my a, which is the square root of 5. My covertices. So if I add, if my vertices I was adding to the x, oops, what the, 2 comma negative 3, right? It's 2 plus or minus square root of 5 comma negative 3. My covertices, I'm going to do plus or minus, I'm going to, are going to be going up because my minor axis is vertical. So therefore, that's going to be 2 comma negative 3 plus or minus the square root of 3. And then last but not least, my foci is going to be, again, my foci is along my major axis, which is horizontal. So I'm going to do it just like my vertices. So it's 2 plus or minus the square root of 2 comma negative 3. And I didn't sketch my graph, but I'm kind of running out of time. And hopefully you guys would feel comfortable sketching the graph with just estimating would be fine.